Hi, welcome back, and in this module we're going to be looking at the Advanced Time Slicer. Now the Advanced Time Slicer, which is created by the Cambridge Technology Partners, is a really interesting take on a line chart. It's a little bit more of an advanced line chart that allows you to have a time filter to it, like basically like a time slicer is what we're talking about here. And so you can actually go to the bottom of this line chart and select a filter portion of that chart and it will actually change the preview on the top to show just the selected portion that you filtered. It's a really neat chart. It's a nice little uh, ability to allow you to filter and view the data. And so let's go ahead and take a look at where you can go download this one and then how you can get started using it. All right, so your first step is going to be to go to the Power BI Custom Visuals Gallery. You can get there by going to visuals.powerbi.com. And once you arrive there, you're going to scroll down until you find the Advanced Time Slicer, which you'll find right here. Go ahead and select the Advanced Time Slicer and then choose to download it. And then once you've downloaded it, store it in a spot that you can find and we can use later. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've, I've already downloaded it on my machine. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over to my Power BI desktop instance. And we're going to start by going ahead and pulling in some data that we'll use for the solution. Now, to give you some context for this example, we're going to be looking at the weekly U.S. oil production for the United States. And so to do that, we're going to go start first by bringing in some data. So we'll do that by going up to the Get Data section here. And we're going to start by selecting an Excel source. So you'll select Excel and then hit Connect. Once you select uh, Excel, You'll then choose the file that I've provided to you, which you'll scroll down and you'll find it's called Weekly U.S. Field Production of Crude Oil. You can find this uh, file as part of the links below if you're watching this video. And I can select Open, and that way I'll be able to now connect to and use this data source. We're going to connect to the spreadsheet inside of that workbook called Oil Production. So I'll select Oil Production here, and you can see it's basically a list of dates and the, uh, barrels and thousands of barrels that were produced for that particular week. Uh, that's the date that the week starts in. And so we'll go ahead and load that into my data model. I'll hit load. And this will bring in that data structure into my Power BI desktop solution. And so what I'd like to do with you first is go ahead and just bring this in as a table so you can see what the data looks like. So I'm going to select the date field and I'll also select, uh, I'll pick this as a table here. And then I'll also select the thousand barrels property here as well, or the field. Now, as you look at this, you can see the data, first of all, is kind of small, so you may want to increase the text size. We've seen how to do this a number of times now at this point, if you've watched any of our previous modules. Yeah, you can see an idea of what the data looks like. Now, you'll notice when I brought date in, when I brought date in by itself, it automatically created this little date hierarchy for me here. And it does that by default. You can actually turn that setting off if you go underneath the options here inside of Power BI. But if you just want to do this as a temporary change where you want to turn off that date hierarchy just one time, but maybe you want to use it other times, if you just want to turn it off once, you can come over here to the field well, and you can tell it that you want to change this from being the date hierarchy by hitting the down arrow next to date to just the date by itself. And so if I select just the date by itself, you'll see it gives me a list of all the dates and the number of barrels of oil that were produced for each of those dates. Now, my next step is going to be to actually bring in the custom visual, the advanced time slicer. So, so to bring in the advanced time slicer, you'll come up to the visualizations pane here. Hit the ellipses next to that and select that you want to import a custom visual. Go ahead and select Import. And you're going to choose from the, uh, the Advanced Time Slicer, which actually has a different name for the file itself. Once you download the Advanced Time Slicer, you'll see it's actually going to be called Brush Chart. And you'll see why here in a moment. This actually has kind of a brush to the chart that you'll do whenever you're going to filter down the data. So you'll select Brush Chart and hit Open. Okay, and it's going to import that successfully. We can see that advanced time slicer now appear here. It's also called a brush chart. And so when you select that, you'll notice that it changes the visual here from a table to the brush chart. Now, the neat thing about how the brush chart works, of course, you can resize it like we're doing here. You can make it take up half the screen, full screen, whatever you prefer. But the way that the brush chart works is, uh, let's tell you what, let's go ahead and go into focus mode here in the top right so you can see it really well. I'm going to hit focus mode here. And when you do, you can now select portions of the chart that you want to filter just by drawing on the bottom here. So this bottom area is the time slicer where you can apply your filter, and the top is the preview that shows the results of your filter you did earlier. So I can select a certain amount of time here. If I wanted to, I can select the, the very large amount of years here if I wanted to. And you'll see on the top portion, it actually shows the results. Very, very interesting here on how it works. So again, I can select a certain area of the data if I wanted to, and it would automatically filter it down to the section that we're looking at here. 
All right, so let me go out of focus mode here for a moment. I'll hit back to report. Again, you can select certain areas of this if you'd like. You can also move that area around if you'd like to, like I'm doing here. You can grab it and move it whichever way you want, so you can have a certain area of this filter now applied to it. I can move that all the way over here if I wanted to, and you can kind of slide it back and forth. I can make it larger if I wanted to or smaller. Very, very fluid with how you work with it. That's pretty much it for the Advanced Time Slicer. It's a very straightforward visual, very easy to use. Hope you guys enjoy this one, and we'll see you in the next one.